What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock the keys of any widget with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock the keys of any widget. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach the code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so what in the world am I talking about by unlocking the keys of a widget? So anytime we have a widget, you know, any kind of widget, an entry box, a button, a label, anything at all, there's attributes we can set. We can set the font of a label. We can set the background color, the border, the, you know, the anchor, all of the different things we can do. And we talk about several of them throughout all of these videos in this playlist, but we've never talked about all of them because there are a lot for every single widget. And how do you know what all those different attributes are, what all those different things you can set are? That's what I'm gonna show you how to figure out in this video. And you can see we can unlock the keys of each widget and get a list of all the different things. So you can see here, uh, BG stands for background, command, default, disable foreground, foreground, font, foreground, height, uh, highlight background, highlight color, highlight thickness, image, justify, over relief, pad X, ped Y, relief, repeated delay, repeated interval, state, take focus, text, text variable, underline, width, and wrap length. And this is just for one widget. And all the different widgets have different attributes. An entry box has different attributes than a, a button, right? Or a label or a text widget or all the different widgets that we have. So they all have different ones of these. How do we figure out what all these are? without having to Google this every time we need to, to do something, right? So that's what we're gonna look at. So let's head over to our code, and there's a very simple way you can do this. So I've got a file called keys.py, I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's just start out with a label, let's create a label, let's call it my label, and it's gonna be a label, and we wanna put it in root, and we want the text to say uh, my label, whatever. And, you know, we can always make the font, bigger if we want. Let's make this Helvetica and size like 18 or so. And then we can my underscore label dot pack this onto the screen. Give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So you know if we wanted to save this and run it, we could call uh, we could call Python keys dot pi. And when we do we get this basic thing, it says my label and that's pretty simple. We are we already understand that. No big deal there, but now, what if we wanna unlock these keys and figure out what all the different attributes are that we can put here when we define our label? Well, we could just call uh, my underscore label dot keys. There's a keys function that will tell us all of the different keys. Now, if we want to print this, for instance, print this to the terminal just really quickly, we can do that. Let's save this and run it again. And when we do, this pops up, we can close it. When we do, we see all of the keys printed to the screen. And you can look through here and just read them. Active background, active foreground, anchor, background. Now this is all a Python list. So if we wanna get crazy, we could loop through this list, make it easier to read. So yeah, let's do that real quick. So instead of this, we could go uh, for key in, and then we could just print, or then we could just call this whole thing. And then inside of here, we could just print print each key, right? So we can save this, run it again. Let me clear the screen and run this guy. So what we do, we've got our app. When we close it, boom, it prints out all of the things on the in the terminal. And you could print these onto the screen of your app as well. You know, you could create a label and config these, but this is easier just to look at these. So we've got active background, active foreground, anchor, background, BD stands for border, BG stands for background. And this is the thing you'll notice a lot of times. There's usually doubles of things. So like background and BG, they're usually the same thing. It's just Kinter does that weirdly. You know, you can reference either one of them. When you, if you want to change the background color, you could call background or you could call BG. They usually always do the same. And you'll be able to figure that out if, you, if you've looked at these a few times. So bitmap, border width, compound, cursor, disabled foreground, foreground, font, foreground, here's another one, foreground and FG, these are the same thing. Uh, height, 
Highlight background, highlight color, highlight thickness, image, justify, pad X, pad Y, relief, state, take focus, text, text variable, underline, width, and wrap length. So we may not know what all of these are, but at least we can see them. And if we have to, we can Google them. Like if I'm not sure what disabled foreground is, I could Google Kinter label widget disabled foreground and probably figure it out in about 20 seconds, right? So these are all the, I call them attributes. I don't know what the actual name of them are, keys, I guess. Uh, but these are all the different things you can set. And we can reference all of these as well. So if you wanted to call, for instance, let's see, let's find a good one here, uh, the relief. So remember, a thing that has a border can have a different relief. It can be sunken, it can be raised, it can be dotted, all different things. So we can find, say, for instance, the relief of our particular label by just calling, let's pull up our code here. So let's come down here and let's print out. Uh, let's see, that would be my underscore label. And then you could just use square brackets. And inside of here, you could just paste in the thing. So this will print out our relief for our particular widget. So if we save this and run it, uh, let's clear the screen, do this again. Here it is, we close it. We see flat is the last one. Our relief is flat, right? Very cool. And you know, you can reference all of these. So the text, but what's the text in our widget? Maybe we want to know that. That's something we might actually need to know in a program. So we could just pop in text there. And remember up here, our text says my label. So this should output my label. So let's save this and run it. And when we do, we get this, we can close it, boom. And then it prints out at the bottom here, my label, which is what our text is. So very, very cool and uh, very easy. So. Like I said, this works with just about every widget. So um, we could play around with this. We could, for instance, create uh, my entry, make an entry box. And that's an entry box. We want to put it in root and then we can my underscore entry. I'm not sure we really even need to pack this, but we can if we want. And then down here, instead of my label, let's make this my entry. And let's get rid of this. We don't really need that. So let's save this and run it. Clear the screen. Now we've got an entry box. We close it. Boom. Here are the keys for the entry box, right? And you can, it, you may not notice right offhand, but there's a lot of different things in here. Insert on time, insert off time, insert with, invalid command, NVCMD, which is probably the same as invalid command, justify, read only background, relief, select background, select border with, select foreground, show state, take focus, text variable, validate, validate command, V command with an X scroll command. Remember, X scroll command deals with a uh, scroll bar. So apparently you could put a scroll bar on there. Who knew? Now we know, right? So you can do this for all of the different widgets. You know, we don't have to go through them all. Obviously, you can do this on your own if you're ever curious. But you know, it's just as easy as let's go my underscore button, create a button, I want to put it in a root, we want the text to equal click me. We want the command to equal something. And if we come up here and define something as a function here and pass, right? Just so there's something there. And then we can my underscore button dot pack this guy. Don't really need to do a pad Y and come down here and my button, save this, run it one more. <laughs> Uh oh, typo, typo. There we go. Why didn't you tell me? All right, so put the screen around again. Boom, there's our app. Click me. Shoom. Here's all the button ones, right? So here's our command. Very cool. Compound cursor. Over relief, relief repeated, repeat delay, repeat interval state. So it might be a good idea for you to go through and just take all the widgets you, you know, regularly use and run it through here and see what all the different things are that you can play with and then just start playing around with them. You know, if you have to, if you don't, if you can't figure out exactly what they are just by reading them, Google it, see what it is, learn all these different things. It's a really good exercise. And like I said, you can access all of these. For instance, we can print Let's go my underscore button. And then maybe we want to do command. What's the command for this one? 
Very interesting. Boom. Our command is 292792966 something. Very weird and very cool. And we learn a little something just by doing this. So that's how to figure out all the attributes, how the, all the keys, all the things that you can fiddle with in each widget. Quick and easy way to do it if you're just writing some code and you can't remember what all of the different options are. Just knock this out in the terminal and read through it and go, oh yeah, that's, uh, you know, pad Y, I remember now, <laughs> right? And uh, very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you could use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.